Hey, everybody. Uh, Dave Kennedy, uh, founder and CEO of Trust Attack and Binary Defense. What I'm going to show you guys today is um, the big challenge we run into uh, at Binary Defense specifically is just the amount of volume and alarms that come in from customer environments. You have SIMs and, and EDRs and everything else that that pipe data into things. And really, the the challenge with that is, is you know, you have customer environments that are mature, you have customer environments that are super noisy. And so how do we get better analysis of alarms of what's malicious and what's not? And with LLMs, the, the big challenging area is you can send a bunch of TTPs into it and other things. But if you're chaining different law bins or doing other things like that, it skirts a lot around a lot of that. So how do you, you know, take a look at something and build an LLM that can help your analysts determine whether or not something's malicious? And that's really where I've been building out this new project called Night Beacon. And what Night Beacon does is it integrates into our analyst process and it's completely transparent to our analysts themselves. So in our SOAR platform, basically when a new alarm comes in, it sends an API query to Night Beacon and says, hey, query this and see whether or not it's malicious or not, okay? And then it brings back a risk probability analysis, an explanation of why that specific thing is either you know benign, uh, you could ignore it, it's probability ranking and gives an explanation of what that is. However, you know what happens if it hasn't seen that before or something new in the, in, in the environment that it hasn't seen? How do I train that model? And so what I, I came up with is, you know, our analysts, when they create a ticket, they will give an explanation, a severity ranking, and they will escalate that ticket to our customer. And then when that gets escalated, it sends another API query as a true positive back to uh, Night Beacon to retrain that model um, based off of the data that it receives. But it also looks at whether or not it's a true positive or false positive, but it also looks at confirmation from our customers too. So if our customer confirms that it's actually an issue, it increases that probability ranking and then retrains that model as it goes along. So it's really all done completely transparent uh, to the analyst through API calls and through our central SOAR. It's really only three API calls, uh, which is super simple and it's really easy to integrate into anything. And then I also created this web UI, which isn't even necessary unless you want to go in. What we're probably going to do is add this, uh, you know, the the prompt here for event analysis into um, our customer environments to where they can query if they have TTPs or things they want to analyze themselves. It'll automatically do that. Um, but I just want to give a quick demo of it. And so you can, within Night Beacon itself, um, you could upload JSON formatted type of data. So if you have like a whole bunch of TTPs that you want to upload, it'll do that. And you can also analyze a specific event through here. So if I throw something in like RegSVR32, you know, calling, you know, a, a specific site, uh, running the scripted object DLL for remote code execution, it will analyze that event and it'll come back with what it thinks is its, its probability ranking is whether or not it's malicious. And then it'll break down why it thinks it's malicious. Now, another thing that I added is uh, rule set behaviors. So for things that we know are malicious in nature, but it maybe doesn't have enough training data on it we can create rule sets that increase the probability ranking based off of those rules. So if you look at things like the Laldin project or you know very specific uh, command and control infrastructure, stuff like that from our threat intel teams, you can create specific rules. If you go under admin and you go over the rule settings, you can add specific def definitions, uh, customer actions, regular expressions, uh, detection rule, process rule, like for Markov chaining, so parent-child process relationships, and then it'll automatically add that rule. And then you just go ahead and reload that rule and it'll add that rule specifically to the UI itself. And so our whole purpose with this is to create a, a pretty fast and continuous feedback loop so that we're continuously training this model and it's all internal. So it's all running off our local LLMs. We're not going out to anything else. I actually um, leveraged Claude, ChatGPT and Grok for a while um, while I was actually starting to, to build out the data sets for this. And quickly, um, our prediction models got much better than what Claude, Grok and ChatGPT were doing. So I completely removed that from external calling. Plus, obviously, you don't want to be querying customer data um, into third party environments. And so it's been working out really well. And we just started integrating this into live data. This is my, my test instance uh, running locally. But just even on a local MacBook, to retrain the models only takes about uh, seven minutes. On our AWS infrastructure, it takes about two seconds uh, to retrain the model, and it retrains every night at 3 a.m. to not have any disruption to you know systems and things like that. So basically, it'll automatically update based off of the analyst feedback relays that we can force a reload if there's like a very specific TTP or new rule. The rules automatically get added um, as it comes in. Basically, uh, really trying to help the time to triage. And the last thing I'll mention is it will automatically reprioritize the risk categorization. One of the big things we run into is like, you know, there might be a medium event that is, you know, during a pen test or during a specific attack. And that medium event doesn't get bubbled up to the analyst during those specific SLAs because it's not a critical or high. This will automatically reprioritize that as a high or critical based on the behavior that it's exhibiting. So the analyst can actually go to that specific thing uh, very quickly. So it's one of the projects I've been working on. Um, have a lot of fun with it. So. Dave, there are some questions in the chat. Would you mind looking over and maybe talking for a couple more minutes? Yeah, absolutely. So 
Couple of things. Uh, what local model am I running? Um, I, I really liked uh, BERT specifically for bi-directional analysis. So BERT is kind of our base model that we use off of. And then based off of the training, we do fine tuning based off of that as well. It's all written in, in Python and Flask. Um, and so, you know, web UI multi-threaded, um, everything else that goes along with it. Production wise, we receive probably around anywhere between 150 to 200,000 alarms a day, just as a general you know concept. And so based off of that and the triaging, we've actually seen within the first week of putting this into production that it's really sped up the amount of time it takes analysts to go and do it. And what I'm working on right now is more agentic AI, where once something is actually confirmed malicious with a higher probability, it will query the APIs for those specific systems and start to centralize all of that into our, our, our SOAR so that you have all the TTPs, artifacts, everything else to be able to triage. And then our eventual next progression with that is to suggest specific playbooks to run, you know, based off of that automatically, based off of, you know, its probability ranking once it's confirmed by the analyst. I, I'm not into the, you know, based on hallucinations and, and the data in, data out and false positives. I don't want to have automatic playbooks automatically go and execute on the customer's environment, especially things like containment. Um, so we're still going to leave that to humans, uh, but eventually, you know, something we want to do. Uh, question on, on open sourcing. I definitely want to fork this into an open source model that can be used uh, by the community for sure. You know, the biggest thing for, for us is, is making sure it works and it has been working, which is great. And then from there, definitely uh, my next aspect is a community version of it so that folks can incorporate it into their own environments. Uh, huge for me, obviously, supporting community and everything else. So, you know, once I get the thing working as anticipated, which every indication is it is right now, um, just give me a few more months to kind of play around with it and, and add additional features. The rule sets, by the way, I added literally right before this, this meeting. So uh, I added all the rule sets to adjust the probability and confidence ranking. So it's always growing and uh, goes from there. Yeah, it's, it's cloud agnostic. Um, one thing, one really cool thing that was really Really important for me is what we call an, an open uh, MDR. So we support all technology platforms. So if you're using Sentinel or QRadar or, uh, you know, uh, Palo Alto or CrowdStrike or Sentinel One, doesn't matter to us. We support, you know, pretty much any type of technology. I had to create a, a universal log translator and handler that we can handle multiple sources and not have to create parsers for each specific type of log source. So one of the big things with the LLMs is being able to get it in a consistent format. And so uh, one of my big overtakings was being able to take essentially any source from any log, whether it's an event log, um, whether it's you know a, a log from a specific you know database, uh, whether it's a cloud you know log doesn't matter to us. It automatically parses it into a intelligible format, analyzes it, and then pushes it into the LLM to be able to then retrain that model off of it. And then we have a lot of diagnostics on whether or not it's actually training it properly. Um, so a lot of, you know, analysis around like, hey, you know, could we be more refined with this or to get better with it? Um, a lot of data around just metrics and making sure like everything's being done properly. Uh, how am I calculating the probability ranking? It's based off of our analysts' rankings. So our analysts, when they go in to uh, adjust something from a load, medium, higher, critical, they will put the severity ranking in there and it trains the model based off of those as it goes through. And then what we also do though is, you know, for what's great with, with ChatGPT and Grok and everything else is that you can build lists of already known TTPs and things like that. So I can say, hey, Grok, comb the web and scour doing deep research or ChatGPT and build me a, a list of high confidence TTPs that you're in there. And then using that as training data to be able to at least get a good base of other previously known TTPs that are out there. Uh, what we also do is we have our threat intelligence team that is always doing the, like the threat hunting and threat intel and everything else. They're also putting in um, everything else. And then we have our tip platform that automatically sends data directly into the model to help it train as well. So for things like command and control, things that are uh, beaconing out, um, DNS, you know, bad uh, DNS models, things like that. All of those things are automatically piped directly in through our API into the model training uh, so that it gets better over time with the data that we feed into it. Very selective off of that, you know, making sure it's the right type of data, making sure it's not something that's going to introduce a lot of false positives or it's like a technique that can trigger a bunch of stuff that throws the model off hand. But it's been super successful for being able to do it. And with all of our trained data and modeling, I think we're sitting at like five gigs for our database set for our, our model. So it's pretty small in comparison for what we're actually doing. So working out really well.